Hello everybody, I'm Nick and today I'm going to show you how you can start collecting the code coverage of your .NET project without needing to rely on your IDE's capability. Code coverage can be sometimes a requirement for your workflow and not every IDE supports it by default and those who might support it might charge an extra premium for it or you might need to use an external plugin to do so. So this all gets a bit too complicated and it's very hard to integrate to your CI pipeline, continuous integration that is, if you need to maybe fail a build because of a low percentage on code coverage. Now in this video, I'm not gonna talk about whether it's important to collect code coverage or whether you should rely on it as a useful metric because that's a different topic for a different video. For now, we're gonna just assume that you need to collect code coverage and see how you can do it. If you like a lot of content and you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribing the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what I have here, and you can see the two folders, source and tests, is the code from the video I did a while back about the coding interview where we refactor um, an existing code base to something new. And as part of that code base, we actually wrote some unit tests. And I can go ahead in Rider and run those tests. And let's briefly explain what code coverage is. Rider supports this cover selected unit tests feature. And if I run this, then I can go to the unit tests coverage page here and I can see how my tests cover my code. What does that mean? Let's go to the user's service here. As you can see, this class is covered at 93% of its overall uh, lines. So if we go here, you can see these green lines here. This icon means that the code from the tests is touching, is going through that constructor, thus covering those lines. The code of my tests doesn't go through this constructor, so you can see that this statement is uncovered by unit tests or any type of test really. And as you can see, the rest of it is covered by my tests. This is basically coverage. Code coverage tells you whether the code in your tests or your tests in general are going through a specific line or just passing through a specific line or branch or method. And then it gives you a percentage overall from how many it is passing through. And then maybe if you have a requirement and say, we need to have at least 70% code coverage, then you fail a build because it is lower than what you want it to be. Now, since Rider doesn't run on GitHub Actions or TeamCity or whatever you're using for CI, we need to find a way to run it with commands or with a more cross-platform way in general. I'm gonna show you the easiest way you can do it right out of the get-go. So I have Parcel here and I'm gonna go ahead and install a .NET tool. And I haven't installed any NuGet package in the project. I'm just gonna install the tool. So I'm gonna say .NET tool install G, which stands for global, and then Covalet.console. I'm gonna install that tool. And that tool is now installed, which means I can use the Covalet command. And if I go back and I do a .NET build and build the project, it will just generate the DLL. So now I can go ahead and say Covalet and find the bin folder, uh, the debug folder, the .NET, and then find the DLL. For me, it is legacy app.unitests.dll. And then say what target I want. And for me, the target is a .NET command. And then target args or arguments is test and no build. Don't build it because you already have the DLL. You don't need to do any building. And if I just run this, you will see right off the get go, I get a 59% line code coverage, or you can see the average here, the branch and the method. This is using Cobertura behind the scenes. That's why you see line, branch and method. Line means, as you can understand line, branch means the branching of your code, how much of that is covered, and then method, which is what you expect, method coverage. And you can see that this is a bit different than this one here. Here we have 69% total code coverage on this application. Uh, here we have 59%. This is because they're using different metrics internally and they exclude different things by default. You can change that at your own discretion. And as you can see, it also created a coverage.json, which some converters exist to make use of this, but you don't really need to worry about it if you're just collecting this percentage number. And this is enough for you to write a small script that goes in, reads it, and then fails a build or passes a build based on that. That's the simplest way. However, it's not as good as something like this here, where you can actually come in and see exactly which methods covered, how much, the lines of code, percentages, and all that. There is a way to do that, but before I show you that way, I wanna show you how you can exclude things from your code coverage, because sometimes, for example, this project over here, the consumer, doesn't need to be covered. I'm gonna go ahead and add it as a reference 
to show you what I mean by excluding. If I go back to this, I'm going to rebuild this project now that I included this new uh, file, this new project actually. And if I rerun uh, Coverlet and cover it, you can see that now this module, this package here, is 0% covered. That's because we don't have any unit tests and we're not supposed to have any unit tests here. So since we're not supposed to have any unit tests for this and we agree that this is not something we should worry about, then we can go ahead and exclude it. There's two ways you can exclude it. First, you can exclude specific classes or methods that you want to exclude by using the exclude from code coverage attribute. This is a bad way of doing this. You're littering your code with something that doesn't need to concern it. You shouldn't know about code coverage. Your code should know about its business logic, its functionality, what it really, really cares about. But this is a way you can do it. And maybe if you find a use case that is not intrusive, you might want to use it. I'm going to show it anyway. And now I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you can see that now the coverage is 100% because it ignores it, so it treats it as covered. I personally don't like this method, but I'm showing it anyway. I'm going to remove it, however, and go back here, and I'm going to show you what's the good way of doing this. And if I go and rebuild it, um, and you can see that now without that uh, attribute, it goes back to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the exclude command here, the exclude argument, and I'm going to say exclude everything that starts with, and then I'm going to specify a namespace. The namespace for us is legacyapp.consumer. And I assume that anything in that uh, package or project starts with that every namespace. So if I go here, I'm pasting that, and then I'm saying star at the end. So exclude everything that starts with that namespace, meaning everything in that project, really. So if I run this now through the command, I didn't have to change anything in my code and this is still now excluded 100% treated as covered. So that's how you can more elegantly exclude the project that you don't care about. So that's all you need to know about the simple and easy way of doing it externally. But then if you need the more formal report, maybe that you also upload somewhere as part of your CI and make browsable, then let's see how we can do that. And this involves adding a NuGet package here. And you need a NuGet package because we need what is called a collector. So we're going to use, again, coverlet. And we're going to use the coverlet.collector as a NuGet package. And we're going to add it. And now that we have it, we can do the following. We can say .NET test. And we can add the collect argument. And we can specify a collector. For us, it's xplat code coverage, which is what is included in that a collector NuGet package that we just added. And this now created this folder here with search results and then coverage.cobertura.xml. You don't need to be able to read this. This is technically the code coverage here, which if you wanted, you could. You could write something that gets that. And this means 57% uh, line coverage. This means 85% branch coverage. And you can see the lines covered and all that. And you can definitely use that as part of your build as well if you want to fail a build based on that, if you don't want to have the printable version. But what you can now do with this is any Cobertura compatible uh, generator or converter will allow you to build this into something more user friendly. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. I'm going to clear this and I'm going to install a separate tool. I'm going to say .NET tool install G global and I'm going to install the .NET uh, report generator global tool. And if I install that now, well, you can see it installed the report generator command, which I can now use. I can say report generator and point to that cobertura.xml file. And I can say hyphen reports, test results, the GUID, and then the file. And then I'm going to specify a target directory. I'm giving it a name, maybe coverage results. And then I'm going to specify one of the report types. Uh, we're only going to go with HTML. So it's going to build an HTML um, report out of that cobertura.xml file. And you can see it here in this new coverage results. Now, as you can see, this is a full blown website and you can see it here. And if I double click on the index.html, you see that it brings up this thing. And if I zoom in, you can see that this gives us the, the parser. This is the Cobertura parser. How many assemblies it found, classes, files, uncovered lines, covered lines, coverage, 57% uh, uh, branch coverage. And then you have this nice form with the same green and red. And you can click on it and see uh, details. For example, if I go to the user, you can see the class itself here. And if I zoom in, because this should be really small, 
yeah, you can see which lines are covered and uh, how they're used. And if I go back here and find a service that is not as covered like this one, you can see the same thing as we saw before, where you have a constructor which is unused and you can see the line and this one is used and you can see everything you need in a very nice user-friendly way um, in an XML. And there's other ways you can actually uh, create a report, but this is the more uh, visual of them and you also get branch coverage, cyclomatic complexity and line coverage. So very, very nice, great stuff. And I highly recommend you go on and give a start to the report generator. It's a great package. It supports different other report types and it's a really, 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 really nice project. And the same goes for Covalet. Go ahead and give them a star to keep doing what they're doing. They're both awesome projects. Now, if any of those two types of code coverage collection is not for you, I highly recommend you go to Report Generator and Covalet and you see if you can find one of the ways that suit your needs. You'll definitely find a way that is useful for you. It's just that you might need to play around with it to see what format your CI can use. That's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.